He did. Okay, so Valorant is a free-to-play first-person shooter developed and published by League of Legends. First teased in 2019 under the name Project A, it was clear that this was going to be a blatant ripoff of the game Project M that was planned to release in the summer of 2021. Project A was then renamed to Valorant to avoid any confusion. It was followed by an official release on June 2nd, 2020. After its release, the game has only been seeing positive feedback with seemingly more people playing every day, and that's probably due to its simple... The objective of the game is quite easy. Two teams of five are trying to secure 13 rounds in order to win the match. Hey. You suck at the game so bad, it's not even funny. You can start off as either being on offense where your objective is to plant the spike at the assigned location and let it detonate before the opposing defense can defuse it to negate that round. Either team can also kill the entire opposing team in order to win the round just as long as the time hasn't expired or the spike hasn't been planted yet. And then you switch sides after a total of 12 rounds. If rounds last until the score is 12 to 12, Teams will alternate from defense and offense until one person inevitably votes for a draw. Now remember when I said it was two teams of five? Scratch that, because that will only be in rare cases. In most matches, you will have at least one guy leave the game. Bro, Viper, Why do you do this to us? I imagine disconnecting. Luckily, this doesn't mean the round is over, because Valorant is a game with a huge clutch potential. Even in a 2v5 scenario, it is still possible to win the round. <laughs> 2v5? One day. Nice. Okay, they're at the C. Found one. Spike planted. Finished. Good shot. That's Good shot. One enemy remaining. What? He's there. There's a bomb. Last player standing. I'm, I'm, I just teleported. So you get like one round and then instantly lose the match after. At the start of every round, you are incentivized to purchase weapons with your credits in order to win rounds. Winning rounds, getting kills, and playing the spike will all grant credits for the next round to buy better weapons. Each weapon varies in price depending on the versatility of it. In round one, you'll probably have to settle for a secondary, such as a shorty, a frenzy, a ghost, a share, or the classic classic. In round two, you will usually go into the light buy phase where you can buy some shield and something under 2,000 credits. You get a lot more choice here in how to play. You can either be a long range marksman tapping heads with the marshal. Or maybe just say, fuck it, I'm done with this aiming bullshit and running gun with the specter or stinger or be a camping bitch like me with the bucky. Most rounds after two are usually known as full buy rounds. These are very important rounds as it will dictate the money economy for both teams. On this round, you are pretty free to use whatever you want, but you will most likely see the phantom and vandal used in most of these rounds because these are weapons that are capable of one tapping in the head, getting kills at long range, as well as being quick with a nice ammo capacity. I can't shoot for shit, so I'll stick with the bucky. Once your team has massed a hefty portion of credits, you can invest in the Big Bundas, this being the Operator and the classically funny Odin, both being able to put the other team in absolute despair until they start copying your style. There is really no diction in what weapon you should buy because most of the weapons can be very good depending on how to use it, and buying cheaper weapons in later rounds will allow your team economy to be healthier. The Guardian, for example, costs like a medium price and is legit trash in my hands, but in the hands of another, it's the most broken weapon in the game. But well, you know what's better than the Guardian? Now, what truly separates this from being a CSGO clone is the agents. Each agent has their own unique abilities that give the game a little twist, or a lot of a twist. In most cases, abilities are supposed to put you in scenarios that will give you an upper hand in the underlying gunfight. Agent abilities can include flashes, smokes, stuns, trips, molotovs, and etc. all used in different ways. This gives each agent a unique playstyle and overall role in the team. Each agent is also classified in either being a duelist, which is supposed to be the damage of the team, initiators, which act as reconnaissance or deterring the enemy team, controllers are usually in charge of smokes or lurking its enemy sights, and sentinels are in charge of making a jigsaw trap. In order to make a good team, you want to have a good spread of roles, maybe like two duelists, an initiator, like a flash, a smoke, maybe a trip, but most importantly, pick who you want to play. Pick can we get a save? Yo, can, can, can we get a save? Can we get a save? Can we get a save? Um, wait, Ali, could you play healer? That's not Sage, that's what I'm reporting to. Racism and toxic behavior.
Each character has an ultimate ability as well that can be used when you collect enough ult points. These are usually definitive game changers that when used can completely switch up the environment of the game. Whether that's by cutting a section of the map like an Ash result, stunning an entire block of enemies with Breach's ult, or literally having the BFG 50 from Phantom Forces. Abilities are the only reason this game is separated from CSGO, and I find that it gives it a more warm and vibrant aesthetic to the game instead of CSGO's dry Gmod quality it has. And remember guys, abilities don't kill. Guns don't either. The map selection on Valorant is quite small right now, but I think it still has a good variety of obstacles for players to adapt around. Maps like Bind, Haven, and Ascend are all around balanced maps in my opinion, that have areas for long range, camping, close combat, and are overall even grounds. Split has a lot more corridors to navigate, prioritizing short range combat. Maps like Breeze have extensive sites that favor long range. And Fracture is a map you will be rarely playing on because of people dodging. Some maps are more defender sided or attacker sided than others as well. Now this may seem unfair, but I see it as another factor of each ego boosting and confidence to go for some more risky plays. And the maps help with this, because it's good to have a lot of variety and options and paths, because at its core value, Valorant is more of a game of outplaying your opponent. And yes, the Odin counts as an outplay. Valorant's rank system starts from Iron 1, Iron 2, Iron 3, Bronze 1, Bronze 2, Bronze 3, Silver 1, Silver 2, Silver 3, Gold 1, Gold 2, Gold 3, Plat 1, Plat 2, Diamond 3, Diamond 3, Immortal, all the way up to- in Valorant, they prioritize more on playing better than actually winning games to get points. This is very well executed by incentivizing being the match MVP, rewarding you way more points than if you were at the bottom of your team. More kills and overall better performance will reward you with more points, maybe even upwards to 30. That doesn't mean you still won't lose points even if you are the match MVP. A loss is a loss. I don't care if three people left on your team. You should have won anyways, you stupid boy. Last season, I peaked at gold one. When doing my placement matches for the new season, I got bronze. This is a good ass game. Valorant skins are some actual scams. Yeah, I'm saying it. If you get a skin for your weapon, you are actually getting scammed. In order to buy weapon skins, you need to have an in-game currency known as Valorant Points, which can only be acquired through real money. And these prices are egregious to say the least. Here are some of the prices for buying Valorant Points. And this only gets worse once you see the prices for the skins. Some of these skins are upwards to $20 for one, and if you buy a pack because oh what a deal, you can be paying more than $100 USD on a free game. Yeah, I just sold my kid for this skin. I think I might change the color of it. Yeah, for sure you got it, but you're not allowed to use your leftover Valorant points though. You have to have this new currency now. It's um, called Radionite. And um, yeah, you have to buy that now with, with your Valorant points. And I already know, you probably don't even have enough Valorant points to even buy Radiant points. Looks like you're gonna have to buy another $5 pack. <laughs> you irresponsible, stupid mother- Alright, whatever. Let me just check how much these Radiant points cost. Oh no. This is bullshit, man. I just wanted the finisher on my brand new Reaver rifle skin, and I have to spend another $20 on these stupid Radiant Points. Oh, shoot, 20% off, though. In order to get Radiant Points, you need to buy it with Valorant Points, creating a cycle of buying more Valorant Points if your wallet doesn't meet the need. I understand that you can just get Radiant Points from the Battle Pass for free, but I still don't see why they just don't charge Valorant Points for color variants and upgrades. But you just gotta respect that sly trick Riot's pulling to squeeze more money out of parents' credit cards. And it's funny, because I could get a skin for free. Like this. And I didn't even pay a dime. Okay, since the end of this video, I just wanted to say, Valorant players are the most satirically gay people I have ever heard. Thanks, cute boy. You can't get into a game without being complimented. Wow, See? yours better. And I honestly like it. Unless you mess up, that is. Then you're getting your shit blasted. Wonderful. Just, just fight it. You're so shit breach. Like, why do you, why do you feel, why do you feel, you're so bad, bro. Six and 15 in lobbies. So are you, Raina. You're fucking... So I end this by saying, Valorant, more like Valor Gay. Got him. Because I thought you were gonna insta like Sage, and this whole time I could have played Sage. Day ten, you could. Play Man, Dean, if only like you didn't throw.